So hello everybody and thanks for joining us for this special live session. I mean, I'm Itzi Kamiel and together with my friend uh, Sepp, Shep Heiken, I'm going to talk very soon about, we're here with a weekly switch interview series called Let's Switch It On. When I'm going to share with you more information about, uh, oh, we talk first with talented people about how you can switch on your practice and even your life. And you're very much invited. So if you are with me right now and listening, we invite you to join us. We are live. And we're going to talk about today about creating amazing client experience, or in different words, how to create an amazing client experience to accelerate the growth of your firm, of your practice. I mean, feel free uh, to type in right now in the chat, as you know, as always, your name, where you're from, because I want to make sure that our the guests who are going to join me will see that you're here with me. I'm not alone. I see you joining. So thank you very much for all of you. We are live. Yes, we are live. <laughs> And definitely put your name in the chat and we know, and I can see some people joining us and doing it. So thank you for that. Thank you, Dale. Thank you, Alex, Argentina, Maron, Bajali. See, from all over the world, you're joining. Great. Awesome. So um, more about before, but I mean, I have the honor to have this session with a top CX expert and best-selling author. And today, my special guest and friend is Shep Aiken, as I mentioned before. But before I invite Shep to join us, as you know, I always like to talk people behind the back. As a speaker, we hate to hear what people say about us, so it's better for me to say behind the back what I really think the highlights of Chef. So Chef Heiken is a, definitely one of the top world client service and experience experts, an award-winning keynote speaker, and a New York Times and Wall Street Journal best-selling author. He is a, what he called Chief Amazing Officer. Yeah, that's his real title from his firm for Shepherd Presentation, and he helps his clients create amazing experiences that get their customers to come back again and again. I think that's what all of you there wants to have, right? He's the author of Moment of Magic, The Loyal Customer, The Cult of the Customer, The Amazement Revolution, Amaze Every Customer Every Time. That's the name of all the books. The Convenience Resolution, Be Amazing or Go Home, and his latest book, I'll Be Back. All nice titles. Is he worth absolutely grabbing each one of these books? His articles have appeared in hundreds of publications, and he has been inducted into the National Speaker Association's Hall of Fame for his achievements as a professional keynote speaker and a lot more things. So without further ado, Shep, I know you don't let me to call the thing. I will bring and invite you. Hello, Shep, and thank you very much for joining us. Hey, it's great to be here, and that's a very nice introduction. My mom would be very happy with that one. Thank you. <laughs> You're also my mom. <laughs> awesome, Chef. Thank you very much for your valuable time and for joining us. And again, for I'm sure will be a marvelous and a very insightful session together with you. But with your permission, let me set the stage for our conversation for our audience. Because, wow, this is, was probably your reaction the last time you had a really great experience as a customer or a client. Remember the way that experience left you feeling. Uh, now do the same as the last time you had a poor experience as a customer. I'm sure you remember that as well. A positive client experience is crucial to the success of your professional practice because a happy client is the one who is likely to become a loyal client who, who can help you boost your revenue and grow your practice. Now, it's not a secret that attracting new clients is usually important for a professional firm, actually for every business, right? But the development of the firm client relationships is arguably even more important. And you know, those who know me, I teach about client relationship. But if you don't have those clients coming in the door, which relationship you will develop? So why do many professional firms often focus so intently on getting new clients and prospects and lose sight of the need for real client services strategy? I just have this question. So the way you think about client experience has probably has profound impact on how you look at your firm as a whole. And I don't think I'm exaggerating here. This is just one reason why creating and obsessing over a great client experience is so important to your firm. And that's why I'm seeing, I'm seeing it's so important that you listen to today, because that's exactly the reason for this special session of the ship. So to help understand more about how to create an amazing client experience for your firm, for your practice, Chef, you know, I'm always starting with what I call 10 in 1. It's 10 simple questions in one minute. I hope you'll be able to answer and help us out. 
And, and can I just answer audience. yes to every question? And, and uh, yeah. that way we'll keep it. <laughs> Don't tell I, all the secret behind the scenes. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, but all the audience who listen to us, if you want to answer also during when I ask Michelle, be, be my guest, answer your answer to the chat as well. So be observed. What are you saying? But in any case, I'm going to answer those questions to Chip and let me prepare Chip. Can so I just, before we, we get into that, sure. I want to expand on something you just said, that we're so focused on getting clients that we forget oftentimes of the follow-up and the maintenance and the retention of the client. So years ago, Professor Dr. Ted Levitt, at senior, he's senior professor at Harvard Business School, he wrote this book titled Marketing Imagination. And he he said, if you walk, and, and this is me paraphrasing it quite a bit, right. but if you walk down the street and you ask 10 people, what's the function of any business? Most of them are gonna say to make money. And what he wanted to emphasize is that's not the function of the business. That's the goal of a business. So the goal of our practice is obviously make money, bring in clients, billable hours, projects, whatever you wanna do and how you bill, that's fine. That's the goal. And he said, the function is to get, acquire, and then keep customers, or in our case, clients. And it's the keeping that's really important. And if you miss, uh, if you confuse and misunderstand what your function is versus the goal of your business, you're not going to reach the goal. So the acquisition and the maintenance of that client is extremely important. Once you bring them in, what are we doing to make sure that the next time they need us, they stay with us instead of looking elsewhere to our competitors? Well, I just love it every moment of it. And I'm sure we're going to hear more about it soon, Chef. But let me go back to the 10 in 1. Yeah, here we go. We'll 10 in 1. I'm ready. One. You ready to dive in? Yes, sir. Here we go. Here's the first one. Creating an amazing client experience can be done by every firm, only by the selected firm, or it depends? Every firm. Absolutely. Thanks, Chef. And I think you understand that this is this session is all of you there. Clients yeah. would be willing to go out of them the way to go to a firm that has better customer service. In some cases, for sure, or they may wish, but mostly stay. Uh, they uh, for sure. <laughs> well, actually, I should say in some cases because it's not a hundred percent, but a very high percentage will seek the experience uh, as well as everything else that's involved in choosing the firm. I agree, and not even in now even more than before in professional services. Mm -hmm. Number three, chef clients believe great customer service is more important than price, less important than price, or the same. Uh, more important. Absolutely. And I think that's what everybody should hear. It's not about pricing. Stop looking at your pricing. Look at client services before. Yeah. I mean, number four, as part of the CX, convenience wins business. Big time? Only in your dreams, Itzik? Or maybe in the future? Big time. <laughs> <laughs> number five, your relationship with your clients have a client influence on their experience. Not always. You bet. Or don't put words in my mouth, Itzik. Um, uh, you bet. I got to go with the you bet. Okay. If you want to expand, by the way, in another 30 seconds, you're always going to allow to. Hey, Number we got to do it all in a minute. I know. <laughs> Number six, bad experience costs you business. Sometimes. Yes. Every single okay. time. Oh, don't make me mad. Well, I, I can't say, you know, every single time is like saying always. And always is great to have. But, you know, sometimes people will tolerate more than others. But eventually, it's going to cost you. And you see, Chef, you're more lawyers than the uh, speaker. Good yeah, I'm answer. like a, po a politician. I just avoided the direct <laughs> answer. Number seven, client expect the professional not to bother them, to only do their job well, or to proactively every single time. Proactive wins. Absolutely. And I think a lot of people who need to hear the message because they feel when they are proactive, they're too pushy, too salesy. Depends how you're doing it. But if you do it for the right purpose to serve a client, absolutely, that's what the client loves. Amazing client experience is for the client, it's client loyalty. Good to have, rarely connected or essential. Uh, it is for client loyalty. And it, it's it's not a it's not a good to have. It's oh, okay, it's essential. Yeah, that's what that's it is. Good. It's not good to have, it's it's a must have. <laughs> Number nine, how important employees' attitude to client experience. The most important, sorry for the entity, in some cases, oh, what's the connection? Most important. Absolutely. And number 10 and the last one, the best result for firms that excel in designing amazing client experiences grow revenue, get more of the right clients, or improvement of employees' skills. 
Um, I, I think it's, gosh, you've got a combination of everything here. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'd love to say I, all, I three of them. all three. I can't give you one because, <laughs> you know, the ultimate goal is we want to create more revenue, right? Well, how do we get there? Well, we make sure we have the right clients and we make sure that our employees, uh, especially, you know, and by the way, it's like bedside manner. The, I, I, the law offices, it's not just to support people, the paralegals, the administrative that is going to make the experience great. It's actually the lawyer, you know, not only are they supposed to do what they do well, but they need to do it and maintain the relationship. Uh, can I tell you a funny story? Um, sure. I may have told this to you when we did our interview. Gosh, I can't remember. That was a few months back. I was hired to work for a, a major law firm's retreat. There were about maybe 600 partners in the room from all over the U.S., one of their largest clients was the opening speaker. And when I say speaker, they were really there to talk about the experience that they had with the firm and take questions from the audience as to what, you know, what, what we could do as a law firm, what could we do better to serve you, somebody that we bill millions and millions of dollars to every year, right? Okay. Right. So as I'm getting prepped and getting ready for that morning, one of the partners, senior partners says, so what are you going to tell us that we don't already know? And I said, you know what? I'm going to tell you everything you already know. You know what to do. You're just not doing it. He goes, give me an example. I said, I'll tell you right now, you don't return your phone calls quick enough. What do you mean? You're going to talk to us about that? I go, hey, it's the basics. It's the foundation of what will build the relationship. If you miss those basics, and I'm telling you right now, you don't return your phone calls fast enough. How do you know? I don't know how I knew. True story. The, the <laughs> client gets on stage and I'm sitting in the front row about five seats away from this guy that was grilling me before we went on and basically almost criticizing me just prior to me going on and telling me that my content is too basic. And somebody asked, is there anything that we could do better? What's the one most important thing we can do? And the client from the stage says, I just wish you guys would call me back a little bit quicker than you do. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at the guy and he oh, looked at me and it's like, oh my gosh, I could see he was like angry, but at the same time he got it, you know, because, because I called him out on it. Uh -huh. And of course, that's part of what I talked about is, is, and we, you mentioned this in the top 10 questions. It's not just uh, responding to a customer on a timely basis, but in your top 10, you asked about proactively engaging. Uh, and if you, are waiting for customers to call you. And when they finally do, you return their call quickly and give them an answer. That's too late. If you already have the information, why can't you reach out and just say, hey, I wanted to give you an update on what's going on. And by the way, it could be a phone call. It can be an email. It doesn't matter. Your goal is to make the client feel they have information. The more information the client is given, the more in control they feel of their experience, which basically means they're gaining confidence about doing business with you. Golden word, Chip. And you know, you, you hit it on the nail because you nail in the head because the fact is in professional firm, a lot of those, what you call fundamental, basic, simple thing, they don't do because they're looking for this big thing mm -hmm. to, to wow the client. You have to do something special. What is it? And someone tell them it's so simple, you know, but it's not easy to implement on a regular basis and consistent. It'd be almost like a second nature for every person in the firm. That's what it is. Right. I mean, and that's what you're being judged on. It's not if you give them, I don't know what, once you know, a year, I, a big gift yep. for Christmas. I would love to create the course that's in every law school that's just, you know, maybe one credit and they've got to go through it to understand the servicing, uh, the experiencing that your clients need to have. So, um, and I love what Dale's saying. If you've earned trust, you can... You can have a bad experience. Let me tell you what that does, by the way. I love that comment. It's not that you can have a bad experience. If you've earned the trust, the client knows that even if there is a bad experience, that they that you will still take care of them. I talk about how to create amazement. And amazement isn't about being over the top. It's about uh, m meeting expectations on the most basic way. I want you to return my call quickly. And by the way, this is what you want your clients to say. They always return my call quickly. That word always followed by the basic expectation. They're always knowledgeable. That means you're a pretty smart lawyer, right? Okay. Uh, they're always, um, 
they're always, you know, uh, quick to keep me updated. Okay. That word always followed by basic expectations. In other words, you don't have to think about what it takes to be over the top. You just have to do what's expected all the time. And it's that all the time part that's hard for, for people to do. But that's all amazing companies do in amazing organizations is that they meet the expectations consistently and predictably. They build the trust, which then creates the relationship of why would I take a chance of going anywhere else? By the way, once in a while, you'll have the opportunity to go above and beyond and do something special. Maybe you'll work all night for a client. But those instances drop in your lap once in a while. They're not day in and day out opportunities to make sure that you're building that relationship, creating the credibility and building the trust that you need to have an ongoing long-term relationship with a client. And I love the one about you sharing, Chef, that I'm sure everybody listening to us and viewing us have right away, right when you talked about it, this example of those companies or the services. So it make it more tangible in the brain. Why don't they do it for their own firm? If you experience it yourself, you can easily just copy paste it for your own firm and start implementing. But I shared in my short interview about you, Chef, that um, the book I'll Be Back, in your eighth book on customer service, if I'm correct, and customer experience, in the book you claim that creating an uh, amazing customer experience is within the reach of every company, or in our case, every professional firm. So my question to you, Chef, really, do you really believe it? Or why is it possible? Yeah, and I just gave you the secret, if it's going to call it a secret, and that is simply... Uh, you are predictable, consistent of meeting the customer's expectations. Being amazing is being a little bit average, better than average all of the time. If On a scale of one to five, where five is like amazing and one is really bad, three is right in the middle. One, two, three. Three is satisfactory. So Horst Schultz, the uh, first president of the Ritz-Carlton Hotel chain, uh, told me, and we both had the same philosophy. I said, you agree with me, I agree with you. Better than average all the time. How much better than average do we have to be? And he thought about it and he said, I don't know, maybe maybe 10%. I said, well, define what that looks like. Describe it to me. He says, it's easy. We take the bags out of the car when the guest arrives at the hotel. The bellman looks at the bag tag and says, oh, Mr. Hyken, is that your name? Yes, Mr. Hyken, welcome. Just using my name, bumped it up a notch. But it gets better because my, maybe this bellman walks me toward the front desk. It says, Mr. Hyken is here to check in. So the bell, uh, bell or the front desk clerk says, well, welcome, Mr. Hyken. They don't ask my name. They just tell me my name. They pull it up and they you know, may say, hey, I welcome back. I've seen you've been here before. You know, what do you want a king size? You know, whatever the interaction is. But here's where it gets even better. As I'm walking through the lobby a couple hours later, either the bellman or the person at the front desk who took care of me says, hey, Mr. Hyken, you find everything okay in your room? They use my name again. Just using my name bumps up the experience. So that's a great example of a little thing that makes a big difference. At the Ritz-Carlton, when you say, hey, can you tell me where the restroom is? They don't say go down the hall, make a right, and you'll see it on your left side. They take they they won't walk you into the restroom, but they lead you there and they say, "Hey, uh, let me show you where, not just let me tell you where." And there's a big difference. Uh, I'll use another example: Ace Hardware, which is a retail hardware chain in 76 countries, I might add, over 4,500 stores. And when you walk in, and they say the difference between nice, friendly service. And helpful service is when somebody walks in and you say, what can I help you find today? And they go, hey, I'm looking for one of these. They don't say that's an aisle seven uh, on the left side in the middle. They go, here, let me take you there, just like they do at the Ritz. But on the way there, they go, well, what are you going to do? Is this part of a project? Is this, you know, what do you need it for? And as they start to learn, they start to make suggestions. And now they're beyond just taking the order. They're actually engaging and being helpful. And I think it's so important. Uh, I was dealing with a law firm a number of years ago, and I'll never forget, we had this great conversation. And I finally said, that, you know, I got a question for you. Could we do that? And, and, the, and the lawyer says back to me, he says, well, is that what you want to do? And I go, that's not what I want to do. I, I just asked if, if, if that's something we might want to consider. Well, if that's what you want to do, surely we can do it. I go, you misunderstand me. I don't really care what I want. <laughs> I just come up with these ideas because I've been a client of different law firms for a long time. And by the way, when we're done with this, if you keep this whole 
you know, you'll do whatever I want you to do kind of attitude. I don't want you to do whatever I want you to do. I want you to do what's best for me. I just had this idea. Is this, you know, anyway, we got nowhere fast. And it was just a short period of time where I realized I've got to disconnect with this guy. He thinks that being good at customer experience is agreeing with everything I say. That's mm -hmm. not true. What's good for me is what's right for me. And the way to make it a good experience is to communicate it in a way that makes me feel good about the decisions that we're making. Love it. And actually, when you're telling us, you know, the stories and examples, I mean, it's always popped in my end, my story. So, I mean, the same thing. I mean, law firm, I remember talk about, you know, talking or walking with it to the toilet the summer. I remember two different firms. I went with one party, which half client of this firm. And one firm just said goodbye to us in the end of the meeting, left us there and go figure out how to go out there. And I'm not joking, but it was a huge firm. It took us 15 minutes to find the exit again. And another firm that didn't let us go in because the fear, I don't know what, we're going to go to another room and look at files. <laughs> so we make sure we're going out till the elevator, push the bottom, till we go out, then he left us. And if you think about it later on, if I think reflect, you're right. I mean, even the client noticed it and he was talking about it while we are walking to another firm, which make a big difference on the attitude and the experience without even noticing. I don't think none of these firms did it you know, intentionally, no, they, if they did, you know, it's because it's a pattern and, and, and it's not laziness either. It's awareness or it's, it's either awareness or lack of awareness. What we try to teach all of our clients and the number one culture changing tool that we provide is a, and, and basically take any index card, a blank index card and just say to everybody, over the next week, I want you to write an example of when you created a positive experience, either for a client or if you're dealing with your your peers internally, call those internal customers, or somebody on the inside. Just give me an example, three sentences long at the most. And it could be something as simple as, client called me at 11 o'clock and I returned their call by 11.45. They were completely surprised that I called them back that quickly. There's your moment of magic, right? Or maybe it's something different. Maybe it's uh, I collaborated with uh, a paralegal on uh, helping get some research, which saved everybody a lot of time and got the client their information quicker. OK, another moment of magic. But what we're trying to do is create an awareness of when we create a good service experience. And if we ask our attorneys and uh, anybody else that's involved in the firm to do this on a regular basis, they start to become what's called service aware, aware of the moments that they're creating, the interactions that they have, and they recognize the opportunities. And they also recognize if they don't do it well, because they're starting to become acutely aware of all of these interactions. That's what we're trying to achieve. Become aware of the opportunity and make sure, you know, you don't walk away and leave the client to find their way out on their own and stumbling around and, you know, you get what I'm trying to say is is uh, become aware of these moments and you should also uh, take a look at the typical journey a client has. Do they come in to see you or is it on the phone? And what does the typical journey look like? Map it out, every interaction, and look for the opportunities within those interactions to make them better. Uh, is this as good as it gets? Are we answering the phone the best way we should? You know, uh, our, our, what's our... What's our uh, basic minimum standard for returning a client's phone call. Is it two hours? Is it three days? I'll tell you right now, I've had clients that uh, in the in the law firm world uh, where they think calling somebody back in two or three days is acceptable. No, it's not. If they wanted to wait to get the answer uh, in three days, they would have waited three days to reach out to you. So it's that easy. <laughs> Love it. I mean, just also you mentioned before Rich Carlton. I'm just going to share here because it's very brand new. I learned this morning, for example, we are going next week to the biggest law firm uh, or lawyers conference in the world in Miami this year. And the Rich Carlton Miami happened to be a problem and they closed the hotel and announced to all the guests today. So I had a call with the chairman of a law firm because I now want to see what solution they will give. What they're going to go. They're going to solve it for them for sure. But let's see how. And that's that's exact example of client experience. Right. And, right. And so anyway, I hope it will be in a good way. <laughs> I'll report to you back, Chef, I promise. So we continue our discussion. Those of you who are joining us, we are live. Yes, we are live. And I see you joining. Put your name in the chat box. Let us know who you are with me and with Chef as well. And I want you also, if you have questions to Chef, put it also in the chat because I want to address your question to him instead of my question. Otherwise, we go on 
and ask our question, but it's the show is for you to help you out. You're invited to learn more about creating an amazing client experience with Shep today, our guest. So Shep, let's face it, many changes happening now in our industry, specifically in professional industry. But I know you wrote about your many times, but nothing has changed in customer service. Now, of course, I agree with you, but let's address the following question, if you allow me. With all the technology that is supporting customer service, how can you say that nothing has changed in customer service? Well, I think in our industry, there's probably less that's changed than the typical industry in that, you know, there's all these digital self-service solutions, although it would be easy for us to tell a client, here's our our client portal for you to log on to. You can see what the latest invoice is, whether it's been paid. You can see where we are in different. So you can give them digital tools. But here's what I mean by nothing's changed. A client will come to you with a question, a problem, even a complaint, okay? And that's the beginning. And at the end, they want that question answered or that problem resolved or that complaint taken care of and they want to be happy, right? That's it. A hundred years ago, that's the way it was. A hundred years from now, that's the way it will be. Now, in between where the client starts and the client ends, yeah, maybe some things have changed. Maybe there's going to be new ways to take care of the client. Maybe there'll be some automation that's involved. Uh, it doesn't matter. What happens in the middle is just the process. We've got the beginning and the end, which needs, and that end needs to have the same outcome as it did, like I say, 100 years ago, 200 years ago. I just wrote the foreword to a friend of mine's book. I don't know if you know Brittany Hodak. Do you know Brittany? Not yet. Uh, she'd be great one day to have on your uh, on your your show Nothing. here. Uh, his, her, she talks about creating super fans. And one of the and she what she liked is I wrote an article about the first complaint letter of all time. And it actually isn't even a typical letter. It's a piece of stone uh, where somebody actually engraved in the stone a short complaint back wow. from like 2000 BC. <laughs> and this is on display in a museum in London uh, as the first complaint letter of all time. <laughs> <laughs> And so, I mean, look, it's been thousands of years. Nothing's oh. changed. <laughs> People still complain. They want to be happy. I agree. And I mean, it's about all client experiences, about the human distant behavior that only human can do. And all right. Do. And by the way, it doesn't right. need to be, I, I want to emphasize, I mentioned complaints. Remember, client could simply have a question. Um, that sure. Maybe they've got a problem and they want you to help them. It's not about a complaint. It's about, I'm calling my lawyer so they can help me, you know? Um, so those are the, you know, and of course, if there is a complaint, by golly, true story, I won't tell you the name of the law firm. That wouldn't be fair, but I called about a, uh, an invoice, uh, and I wasn't sure like why this was on there. And I talked to the person and they agreed. Yeah, we probably need to adjust that. And you know what? I, I got a revised bill, which had that, um, amount reduced. And then it also added like, uh, two tenths of an hour, uh, for the conversation about the complaint. And I go, are you freaking kidding me? And I called him out on that. He goes, that is a mistake. I go, well, it doesn't look like it to me. This is two in a row we're talking about here. <laughs> now you're talking as a customer. I love it. <laughs> now, those of you joining us, you're invited to learn more about creating amazing client experience with Shep Hyken here with us as a guest. So, Shep, I want to help our viewers think differently and get practical advice. So we can ask you to the real question, the how, the how to. So how to design these, cre or create this experience that gets customers, as you said, to return again and again and again. Yep. So, and, that, and that's why we call the book, I'll Be Back, how to get customers to come back again and again, or clients. At the end of the book, there's a chapter called Where the Rubber Meets the Road, and it's a six-step process, which is really a six-step question conversation that you wanna have with people within your firm. I would suggest considering all these, this is what I, uh, I'm going to take you through it in like a minute or two. Question number one is why would a client choose us instead of another firm? And I'm not looking for answers like, because we have great service. No, maybe we have a specialty that they would choose us over someone else. I want to know what the real differences are. Maybe we have a different technique. I'll give you a quick example. I have a, uh, I'm switching a law firm right now from uh, my estate planning to a new oh, wow. lawyer. Why? Uh, when I went to uh, update my recent plan, it was uh, an hourly, you know, uh, just like anybody would do billable hours. 
And then when I had a question, I received the bill and I could see everything. And that was great. I like this other lawyer because it looks like it might even be a little bit more expensive. I'm not sure, but it's a flat fee to do all the documents that I want updated and made. And I don't come back again for another five years. And in between today and five years from now, I can call 25 times, 50 times to ask questions. And unless they're actually going to create a new document, there's no charge. It's part of the project. Now, obviously, I'm not going to call 50 times. Probably won't even call two or three times But if we do it right. But then at the end of five years, they will look at it, determine whether or not I even need to come in or whether we should wait another three to five years. And no charge for that. It's just a flat fee. And when it comes time to redo it again, I'll get charged again. I go, you know what? I like that. The guy has a great reputation. Many people love him. And not just for the relationship, but because of the quality of his work and his firm's work. And I thought, wow, this is really interesting, different way of approaching it. Uh, no nickel and diming. I just called my accountant the other day, had a question about something, and I got a bill for $145 for it. Now, that's not a lot of money. You know, you're only on the phone for a short time. But it's like, eh, you know, I, I, that one might have been a one he could have thrown me it's a bill. It's yeah. sad, Jim. That's sad. Yeah. Right. Oh. But I mean that. But you're touching. I mean, you know, as you know, it's immune information. You talk about in the professional services, hourly charge or fixed fee. You know, we are discussing in years and years and years, never come out. But you talk about the other side of it is clarity. The clarity is part of client experience, right? You know, expectation. That's clarity of expectations. Together. Everything. Exactly. Let's get those expectations on the table so we know exactly what to expect. Exactly, because I don't want people thinking that you're complaining about the pricing. I'm sure right. you. My chef will pay anything you want. If it's clear, it's worth it, he will pay the value. But if you don't, oh, then yep. you get it. So anyway, I got you to the first question. Let me real quickly go through the next. Sure, question. sure, sure. Why would someone do business with me? Why would somebody choose somebody else other than our firm? That's number two. Number three is the reason they would choose somebody else, something that we can be doing. And if mm -hmm. so, let's adopt, not completely copy, because that's just going to make us a commodity. What can we do to make it better or different? Uh, question number four is what brands outside of our industry do we love to do business with for any reason? And why do we really love doing business with them? And it could be uh, you love Amazon and, and you love the way they keep you updated by sending you an email, your orders place, your orders ship, your orders received, and you love knowing that information. Maybe it's the restaurant down the street where every time you walk in, they recognize you. You don't even have to order. They just know they make you feel like they know you that well. Whatever those outside of the industry companies are doing to make you love them, make sure the why is even more important than the what. And then you look at step five is the why behind what they're doing, something that you can be bringing in as well. And what's cool about that is now you get to look at companies outside of your industry. They're going to make your firm uh, even you know that really separates you from your direct competitor because they're probably not looking at you know a shoe repair store, a restaurant, Amazon, the Ritz Carlton, and all the firms that and companies that you love uh, and why. And by the way, when you get to number six, this is a great question. After you've taken a look at your competition, found some ways to improve based on what they may be doing, and you look at these outside of the industry companies and find ways to improve. Now the next question, final question is. Now, why would someone want to do this with me after I implement these ideas? And hopefully you'll get some different answers than the first uh, version of that question. So that's the six step process. Thank you very much. That's very practical and very to the point. So, I mean, again, I mean, I hope you wrote it down. If not, you can always watch the replay and listen to it again. And, you know, if you want, I'm here with Chef Eichen speaking about creating an amazing client experience almost at the end of our conversation. But if, of course, if you want an interest to learn more about Chef and his work, I mean, I suggest warmly check up his website, hiking.com. Let me put it on the screen so you all can see. Hiking.com, there you can find it. Also, where you can get the books. Definitely the last one. I'll be back if you want to learn more about this process and more about Jeff. And, of course, if you want to get him as a speaker, trainer, anything else, get in touch. I promise you worth every penny and every opportunity to interact with Jeff. And if you want to make sure you never miss one of our weekly which Switch on interview series, follow me on LinkedIn or go to the Switch Up website. You can sign up, get my business development strategies and tips, and you'll be added to our email list where you can get regular reminder about fantastic guests like Shep of today. So almost at the end, Shep, and let's continue about the practical topics of creating an amazing client experience. But from my humble experience, you know, when I mentor and, and train many leading professional firms worldwide, 
I notice many reasons a client would terminate their relationship with their professional service provider for a lot of occasion. And I know that you cover in your last book again 10 reasons. We, uh, so we don't have the time, of course, to cover all the 10 of them, but can you give us an example of two or three reasons why you sure. find internet relations? And, and by the way, I, I back this up with research. If you get to hiking.com, uh, make sure you download the free research. Uh, it's, it's worth it. It's a full report. And the number one reason clients, customers, whatever you want to call them, will leave you is because of rudeness and apathy. Okay, this is what customers want and you don't give it or your clients want you don't give it to them if you if you treat them with anything other than respect, uh, but definitely rudeness and apathy. And here's what's crazy about this. Back in the 1980s, uh, there was a report by uh, done commissioned by the White House Office of Consumer Affairs on why customers leave. And the number one reason just over 70 percent of the time was rudeness and apathy. So keep that in mind that indifference, rudeness, apathy, and that could be the receptionist that doesn't have that warm, inviting welcome, the way an attorney answers their phone, their assistant. Uh, it's just simple little interactions are what can drive, you know, part of that experience of, of uh, make somebody feel like they're on their game or, or they're not. Um, knowledge, you know, it's expected that you have knowledge. And, and if you don't, that's like saying, uh, you know, your product doesn't do what it's supposed to do. So those are just a couple of reasons. Great, Chef. And I mean, as I said, almost at the end of our conversation, let me summarize it because, you know, I want to ask people what level of, of client experience that your firm experience or aspire to achieve? Do you ever ask them those questions? Because I think we can all agree that anything below good is inadvocate. You know, but even good, and I know Chef, Chef will agree, isn't good enough for clients. See, no, really it, and, and this is my point from earlier in the conversation. If on a scale of one to five, one is bad and five is good. If three is average, average is bad. If you want four, if you want to get a five on a scale of one to five, you don't even have to be a four or a five. You have to be just the tiniest li little bit better than average. But the key, and I'll emphasize this, is consistency and predictability. And I'm also going to emphasize that everything we've talked about today is common sense that's not always as common as it should be. There is no rocket science here. There's no brain surgery. This is, you know, what basic expectations are. And to me, this is foundational. This is the start. And then if you can add on top of that, your expertise, your relationship building skills beyond the basic expectations. And that's, you know, how comfortable you make your clients feel with you and your, you know, partners and others in your firm. I think you, you've got this combination of, of really that's going to bulletproof you from competitors stealing your clients away from you. And really, that's what we're trying to do. Achieve the long-term relationship for years and years so that clients, whenever they need the services that we offer, they will call us instead of look elsewhere. By the way, you know you're doing a really good job when your client calls you for something they know you don't do, but asks you where they should go to get that advice, get that information, who they should talk to. Absolutely. And, that, and that's exactly the level you want to be yep. on a regular basis. Because you really inspire... The trusted advisor. Right. Exactly. Yep. To really inspire client loyalty, uh, client experience, I think, must be consistently amazing, but even, as you all heard, even magical. And while magical seems like a pretty high bar to a lot of you, it's actually not tough to achieve, as you learned today in this insightful session with Shep. So to summarize this great session with you, Shep, Shep, I want to share this time a quote by yourself that definitely can inspire many of our listeners. And you said, that, correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm quoting you wrong, our customers are smarter than ever before. They are no longer going to compare you to a direct competitors. You are not going to be compared to the best service that your customer have ever had. And I think you agree that it's also a great professional firm. Yes, sir. Right so, so great so far. If our friends are listening to us, taking action, you didn't ask a question, you missed, but now it's time to take action to implement everything you learned in this session. Get in touch with Chef. Learn more about what he's doing. As I have, I've been here with Chef Hyken, as I said, he's a customer expert, number one for me in the world, customer and experience expert, and award-winning keynote speaker and New York Times and Wall Street Journal best-selling author. I get you the best. I want you to learn. And don't be embarrassed to approach people like Chef because they're here to help to serve. They're not here to just approach and teach you. Okay, so for now, I want to thank you, Shep, 
being fantastic. I know the time passed amazingly fast. It flies by. Well, thanks everything. for having me. It's great to be on your show. Thank you. Loved it again. And thanks for uh, Shepard. I want to thank each one of you here for being with us, listening to us. I hope you enjoy it. Watch the replay. Watch, learn more things. Remember, next episode is next Tuesday, 6 p.m. Central European time, 12 p.m. Eastern time, 9 a.m. Pacific time. And now, now it's the time to switch on and create an amazing client experience for your firm. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Shep. Bye for now. <laughs>